Hey everyone, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am live on YouTube right now, and I'm tuning in with you guys today to talk to you a little bit about soulmates. And recently, I was asked the question, Matt, if you're married to someone here in this world, does that mean that you automatically are together in heaven? And I want to answer this question, but before I do, I don't want to stress you guys out, all right? And I don't want you guys to freak out when I tell you, you know, the answer to this, because every time I talk about this topic, people start to get all freaked out. But I want you to watch this video to the very end, because there's a lot that you need to know about soulmates and what happens when we get to the other side. All right, ready? We're going to answer this question right now. So the question is, if we were married here in this world, do we make it back with that person on the other side? And the answer is, is not always. Now, hold on. Don't freak out. Let me explain it all. The first thing that I want to let you know about a soulmate is this. A soulmate is someone that we meet here in this world that's our one and only. That's our true love. It's the person that we immediately connect with, that we immediately fall in love with. And our soulmate is the person that we, that we end up with on the other side. Now, don't get me wrong. There are, you know, tons and tons and tons of readings that I do where people who are married here in this world will end up together on the other side. But there are rare occasions and there are rare instances where our soul will not make it back with our husband, our wife, or our significant other. And I'm here today to make, to make this video to tell you why that is. And before I tell you why this is, I first of all want to tell you how I know this. And this is the reason why I know this. Remember, everything that I share with all of you guys, I didn't read, I didn't research. Everything that I share with you, I've learned directly from the souls on the other side. When I do different readings, when I talk to different souls, you know, I start to realize what actually happens when we leave this world. I start to realize what happens in heaven, who we're with in heaven. And the souls on the other side have also talked to me about soulmates. So to explain to you how I've learned this, I want to share with you one of the readings that I did. Because this is where I actually first, this was the first time ever that I actually had the situation where a spirit told me that they would not be back with their wife when their wife transitioned on. So here's what happened. I was doing a reading one time. And this, this, uh, husband, this, this husband and wife were together. The husband had passed away and his wife came to me for a reading. And it was an arranged marriage where their family had put them together. They agreed to marry one another. But the moment after they said, I do, the moment that they got married and they started to live together, they realized that they were polar opposites of one another. These people could not have had less in common with one another. And it was really, really tough because as much as they tried to make the marriage work, they just weren't in love. And it got to the point where they slept in separate bedrooms. They both worked different, different, uh, different work schedules where, you know, uh, the husband work, worked nights and, and the wife worked days. They literally spent as much time apart from one another because every time they were together, it was just awkward. And what was so crazy about it is that, you know, the more that they were with one another, the more that their relationship tensed up. They would fight with one another. They would argue with one another. And more importantly, you know, the family was putting a lot of pressure on them to get to uh, to have children, you know, uh, to get their family started, to go and to, you know, uh, look at houses, look at where they wanted to live. And the more pressure that the family put on them, the more that it just seemed wrong. Well, it actually had gotten so bad and the relationship was so was under so much strain that the man, the husband actually had taken his life. And what was so sad is he had taken his, his life, his, his life and his wife here in this world was so upset because, you know, she knew the reason why she had done it. You know, they felt like they were living this fake life here in this world. He felt that way. She felt that way. And, you know, the relationship was put under so much stress that, you know, unfortunately this tragedy, just this tragedy had happened as a result of it. And what was so terrible was that during this reading, she came to me so upset. She wanted to make sure that he that he was okay. You know, even though they weren't soulmates and she never felt he was her soulmate. And even though, you know, she didn't love him like a husband, she did care very much for him. And she did, you know, have a strong and special bond with him because she had been with him for so many years. So she came to me to find out how he was, how he was, how he was doing. And he came through and, you know, he, he uh, said that, you know, they should have never been together here in this world. You know, he had, he had said, he had validated all of the things that she felt as well. 
And the one thing that he regretted during the reading was that he wishes that he wished that he would have told her this here in this world because they both felt the same thing. They both, you know, were dealing with the same pain and the same hurt being together, but they never voiced it to one another. Well, what's so crazy is that this woman had such a deep fear. She feared that because she married him, that one day when she, when she would pass away, she feared that she would be in heaven and forced to spend the rest of eternity with someone that she truly didn't love and someone that truly didn't love her. And you know, he came through and he wanted her to have peace here in this world. He said to me, please let her know that we weren't soulmates. Please let her know that, you know, uh, we won't be together on the other side, you know, and it's okay for her to love again. And that was the first reading that I ever did where I heard that two people, even though they were married here in this world, were not going to be together on the other side. You know, that was the first reading that I did that, you know, I truly realized, wow, you know, even though we might have a marriage here in the physical, you know, heaven does not, does not check for marriage certificates. And when I asked the spirit world about this, I asked them, you know, how is it, how is it that, you know, we find our soulmate? How is it that, you know, uh, how, how is it that, you know, we transition on into heaven and are back with them? How do we know who our soulmate is? And this is what the spirit world has told me. The spirit world has explained to me that when we pass on to the other side, our soul must choose the person that we love and that person must choose us. And that's how we become soulmates. That's how we become one on the other side when we're in heaven. So for example, let me give you an example. If your mom and dad loved one another, if they were a match made in heaven, if they literally met at a young age, got married, had kids, spent every single waking moment with one another, loved each other up to the day that they died, don't you know that, you know, at the end of the day, they are most likely together in heaven. Why is it? Because, you know, because the husband would choose his wife and the wife would choose, would choose her husband. And that's what soulmates are. But there are instances, there are instances when we go to the other side and we choose not to be with our significant other that we had here in this world. And I've seen this happen, you know, on different occasions. For example, here in this world, we don't always marry for love. Unfortunately, some people marry for other means. Some people marry, you know, because they're young and they make the wrong, they make the wrong, um, they make the wrong decision. Other people marry because they think they know the person that they're marrying. And once they get into the marriage, the person is somebody, somebody totally different, or, you know, uh, they find out things they didn't know. Or they, they get married and they find out they weren't in love. Or some people marry for the wrong reasons. They they marry for money. They marry for a status. They marry for, you know, just, just to get married so they're not alone. And what I want to let you know is some people hold on to the relationships for that reason. Some people choose to stay in relationships because of the fact that uh, they don't want to disappoint their families. They choose to stay in a marriage because they don't want to break apart the family. They choose to stay in the marriage because they don't want to disappoint their kids. They want to see their kids you know, um, happy knowing that their parents are together. Well, what I want you to know is at the end of the day, do you think that, that, you know, that husband and wife that went through, you know, 20 years of, you know, uh, misery here in this world are really going to choose each other on the other side? Well, that's what a soulmate is. It's that at the end of the day, when we transition on into heaven, we chose our, we choose our soulmate and our, cho and our soulmate has to choose us, right? So for example, one day when I pass, one day when I pass, when I go to the other side, if I choose to be with Alexa and I say Alexa is the one that I love, I want to be with Alexa, but Alexa's like, Alexa doesn't want to be with me, then, you know, that relationship doesn't get forced in heaven. Because I want you to know one thing. I want you to know that we still have our choices when we go to the other side. And I know that I talked a lot about, about negative things. This is all, this all seems very negative, but I also want to talk about the positive ends of that too. We talked about how married couples might not necessarily make it back with one another on the other side. But I also want to talk about souls that were not married and what happens to them when they go to, this, to the other side. For example, I had a reading that I did where this, where this young woman had gone and, you know, got engaged to her, to her longtime boyfriend. They were so excited. You know, they, were, they wanted to start a family. They wanted to buy a house. You know, they were, they were planning on getting married. And they wanted to do everything the right way. They literally went and, you know, was planning this big wedding with their family. You know, the wedding had taken a year to plan. They were, then after the wedding, they were all set up where they wanted to buy a house and then they wanted to have kids. Those were their goals. And what was so sad is literally six months before their wedding, the husband was in a tragic car accident and died. And 
his soon to be wife, his fiance was so upset. I mean, they were only, they were only in their twenties. She was so, she was so angry and mad and hurt. And she is, and what was so sad is she thought that because they never got married here in this world, she thought that they weren't going to be together in heaven. And do you know that he came through to me in a reading and he said, Matt, you need to let my wife know that she's my wife. Because even though we never got married, even though we even though we never got to say I do, he says, I still view her as my wife the same way that she views me as her husband, even though we never got to sign the dotted line. And he explained to me that that piece of paper that we signed here in this world might mean something to us in this life. But in the afterlife, we still end up with our soulmate. And in this case, he told me that she would be she would be um, he, she was his true soulmate. And he was her true soulmate and that they would end up to, together. And he also told me something very interesting, which I want to share with all of you. And this is something that I still use in my teachings today that I learned from doing this reading is during this reading, he told me, Matt, he says, you need to tell, tell my wife. He says that even if she gets remarried two times, three times, even if, even if she has children with someone else, he says, we will always be soulmates. He said, please tell her that we're meant to have different life partners. We're meant to have different people within our lives. He says, but in heaven, we only have, he explained to me, we only have one soulmate. So even if she gets married two or three times at the end of the day, you know, he would be choosing her. And if she chose to be with him, then they would end up together in heaven with one another. Well, this, that might sound, that might sound like a little strange because you might be saying, well, what about the person that she remarries after him? What happens to, what happens, you know, to that person? Does that person not have a soulmate? Well, what I want you to know is this, is we always have, we all, we always have, you know, multiple partners within our life. You know, sometimes people will meet their soulmate later on, excuse me, early on in life. They might separate from that person. They get, might re, remarry someone else and years later realize that first person was their soulmate. Well, what I want you to know is this, is that the end of the day, we, uh, you know, in heaven, we choose who our true soulmate is after we go through our life review, because it's during our life review that we actually see who our soulmate is. Now, this isn't a surprise. So I want you all to know this because some people will uh, say to me, oh, my God, like someone said to me, Matt, that's so scary. We don't know who our soulmate is and we don't know what happens when we go to the other side and who we're with. No, 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 no. It's not scary because everybody has that. There are there's no soul that has come through and told me they were surprised. You know, like that woman that I was reading for where, you know, her and her husband were the were opposites here in this world. It was an arranged marriage. She was on the other side saying, you know, it's OK. We're not soulmates. Don't hold on to any hurt. She wasn't like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. She was so relieved because he had told her what she had been feeling all along. So what I want you to know is that if you and your, your husband or you and your significant other or you and your wife are madly in love with one another and have such a strong romance and a strong bond and a strong love with one another, guess what? You know, chances are, you know that that's your soulmate. You know when you have met your soulmate and you know when you've lost your soulmate. It's something that, it's something that, you know, is an intuitive psychic connection that we have with that person. And what I want you to know is that if you don't know who that soulmate is, when we go through the life review, it's all laid out in front of us. When we meet our soulmate, how we meet our soulmate. And sometimes we might not even meet our soulmate until we get to the other side. You know, for example, let's say your soulmate was somebody who was, you know, uh, who died before you got to meet them and you were and you ended up just being alone your whole life here in this world. You know, there are instances that I've heard while doing readings where sometimes we actually meet our soulmate in heaven, which I know sounds a little bit crazy. But like I said, life interferes. So sometimes, like I said, we have a soulmate that we're meant to meet, but life interferes where that person might die at a young age or that person might pass, you know, before we get to meet them or we're in different places in our lives or whatever it is. And we don't get to meet that person. We do meet in heaven. But at the end of the day, it's your choice. It's your choice on who you want to be with. So like I said, there are no surprises. Even the souls that don't end up back together on the other side, there's no surprises there. It's not like they're like, oh my God, I thought you were going to choose me. And I thought, you know, you're going to be whatever. You know, after we go through our life review, it's crystal clear. And you know why those decisions were made. And I want to let you know this. I want to let you know that, you know, for example, I've had this happen with the, with the reading with that, that I did for a man who had lost his mom and his dad. His mom and his dad had got divorced here in this world. They could not live together. At one point, they they separated. They were like, we, you know, we're going our separate ways. And then once they separated from one another, and once they signed the divorce papers, they realized that they were true soulmates. And don't you know that before they died, they actually got back together here in this world. And, you know, once they got back together, 
they actually came through on the other side. And they said, you know, to their son, you know, even though we were divorced here in the physical world, the same way we got reconnected here in this here in this world, they never remarried, but they did get back together. We're together on the other side. So, you know, like I says, we have a pretty good idea of who our soulmate is. We we know in some cases who our soulmate is. But if but I've had so many people that have come to me that, you know, don't feel like that they're with their soulmate. And that's where later on it gets a little bit tricky once we go to the other side. Because if you're questioning every day, if you're not happy with the person that you're with, if you're not happy with the life that you're living, if you're not happy or, or if you don't feel romance with the person that you married, at the end of the day, you know, when you get to the other side, that's when you go through that life of you and, and you really have to pick up who is your soulmate. So I want to let you guys know that because like I says, you know, we are meant to have multiple partners here in this world. We do have different people that come into our lives. And I want you to know that, you know, even if we never made a relationship happen, sometimes those people are our soulmates in heaven. For example, you might have had somebody that you dated, you know, um, on and off back when you were younger and you felt that was your soulmate, but you could never get married. You never was able to form a life with one another because people or um, or miles or uh, travel or school or whatever it was got in the way and pulled you apart. Well, that's why in heaven. You know, it's almost like, heaven, remember, heaven is like a new chapter for us. And our soul has a divine journey when we get to heaven. People are not separated. They're reunited. And that's what I want you to know. The only time we're separated from our soulmate, or the, the only time that we're separated from some someone on the other side is when it truly wasn't a match. And at the end of the day, it's not God. There's not someone in heaven that's saying, oh, wait a minute. You two didn't get along here in this world. So you're sorry, you're not together. Take your wedding bands off and you're going on the single side and you're going over there because because uh, your soulmate's over there in that corner. You know, that's not the way that it works. When we go to the other side, this is something that we settle ourselves. So you have that choice when you go to heaven. There's not someone up there with the ruler that's slapping it saying, all right, we're going to figure this out. Where the hell is everyone going? Who's going to end up with who? Do you choose this one or do you choose that one? You know, we meet with the people in our lives. You know, we see the people that we were, we see the connections and the closeness and the love that they had or we had for them. And then at the same time, you know, uh, at the same time, our soul chooses who we're with, who, who we want to be with. And at the end of the day, they choose us. And, you know, that's the reason why, too, is that, you know, we wouldn't end up in heaven with somebody who truly wouldn't love us or care about us or want good things for us. So I want you guys to know that because I know that this is a this is something that so many of you guys have asked me about. And it even happens when you're married multiple times. You know, it was actually funny. There was a woman that I was reading for one time and she had husband after husband after husband after husband. I think she was literally married four times. And she says to me, Matt, who the hell am I going to be with when I die? She's like, I had four husbands. I looked at her and I go, how the hell do I know? And she goes, well, you're the psychic medium. You should tell me who I'm going to be with. I go, honey, I says, I don't do that. I says, because at the end of the day, your soul has to choose. So she goes, well, who am I going to choose? I go, I don't know. I can't make that decision for you. I says, you know, that's something when you get to the other side, your soul will choose one of those souls and those souls will choose, you know, one of those souls will choose to be with you. So that's one of the things that, that happens that, you know, I think is, is truly amazing because, you know, so many people are alone here in this world and they don't come through alone in heaven. You know, heaven is not a place of being lonely. Heaven is not a place of us being in a marriage or in a relationship where we're unhappy. Heaven isn't a place where we're living a life that's unhappy. It's that we take our very best connections. We take those soul connections that we made here in this world. We transition onto the other side. And we take our life that was here and we just kind of bring it over to the spirit world. We carry with us our pets that have passed, our memories here in this world, the special connections that we had. And even, even the people that, um, even the people that weren't blood related to us, like friends, extended family. And even in some cases, when people uh, adopt children, you know, even though they, they may have been, been uh, born from another family, those souls are still connected with us in heaven because our soul kind of signs us our, that uh, we kind of sign ourselves to them. For example, let's say that somebody was uh, you would let's say you adopted somebody here in this world, and you know for for that child's whole life up till when they were adult, they saw you as their mom. They saw you as as uh, as their mother, even though you know uh, the connection may have been an adoption. Know that in the other uh, in heaven. That person, that that child, or that uh, person that passes doesn't doesn't just go back with their birth mother. They stay with you because when you adopt into the family, when you adopt that soul, that person, I should say, it's a soul person. 
you actually adopt them in heaven as well. Our connections remain the same, like I said, and you will still know your life partners, although there is just one soulmate. It's almost like it's almost like how here in this world we have stepfather, stepmother, right? We might have we might have um, you might you might be uh, you might have a father, but then also have a stepfather as well. And to you, both your stepfather and your dad were both a part of your life and connected. Well, that's kind of how the life partner situation is on the other side. We still stay connected with our life partners, but we only have one true soulmate. And I love doing the readings. One of the things I love is when souls will come through and actually tell me who their soul, soul chose at the end of the day. They'll tell me who they're with, who they're together. And I love doing those readings. I love those readings when mom and dads come through together. I love those readings when, you know, um, somebody will show me that they're back with their significant other. They're back with their one true love. You know, and they'll, they'll talk about these uh, scenarios. And it's so amazing to see how happy these souls are on the other side. Because heaven is a place of peace. And that's what I want you guys all to know. So I don't, I'm not sure if you guys have heard the news yet, but if you want a reading with me, I just announced some new places that I'm coming to give live readings. I'm coming in June. I just announced in June, I'm coming to Houston, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, and Dallas, Texas. I'm coming to give live readings there. And then I'm heading over to Mesa, Arizona and Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm coming to give readings there. And then I'm coming over to uh, Las Vegas where I'll be giving readings. I think it's July 15th and 16th. Then I'm coming to Los Angeles, California, Wheatlands, California, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm also coming to Detroit, Michigan as well. So if you live in one of those cities or states, I hope that you'll come and join me for a live evening of messages from the other side. It's during these events that I am all over the room helping you guys reconnect with your loved ones on the other side. And if you've seen some videos of me giving readings in, in, in theaters, you'll see that it doesn't matter where you guys sit. It just matters that you're there. Because when you're attending and you're there, your loved ones are spirit and spirit are there. So it doesn't matter if you're sitting in the balcony. It doesn't matter if you're sitting on the side. It doesn't matter if you're sitting up front and center. If there's a message from your loved one, I will be there to deliver it to you. So that being said, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, uh, Mesa, Arizona, Flagstaff, Arizona, Los Angeles, California, Wheatlands, California, Toppenish, Washington, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Detroit, Michigan, I'm coming to see you. So if you'd like to reserve your seat, you can do so by visiting meetmattfraser.com. Just make sure you get your tickets in advance because not many seats are left. And if you don't live in one of those cities or states, I want to let you know that I haven't forgotten about you. I want to let you know that you can attend an online group reading with me. It's only $19 to attend an online reading. And during those events, it's exactly what you see on my YouTube page. So I have a little secret. All the readings that are on my YouTube page, every single reading video that you see on my, on my YouTube page are not private readings. Those are online group readings. Those people have gotten a reading because they signed up for an online group reading and their loved one has come through. And you can do the same thing. What's so amazing is that these take place through Zoom. What happens is when you sign up for an online reading, I email you a date with a link. You literally click on that link. Your camera turns on. You know, my camera turns on. The people who are there, their cameras turn on. And next thing you know, it's reading after reading after reading. And I spend the whole event reconnecting as many of you as possible that I can with your loved ones in spirit. So I have some sad news. There are only three online readings left for summer. It's August 1st, August 10th, and August 11th. And I want you to know that August, August, um, August 1st is almost sold out. I am going on paternity leave. So I want to let you know that these are the only online readings for summer. So if you'd like to come and join me, if there's someone that you've been wanting to hear from in spirit, you've got to go to my website, meetmattfraser.com. That's meetmattfraser.com and come and join me for an online group reading. Guys, I tried to keep this as affordable as ever. It's only $19 to attend for one reason. The saddest thing is, is when I get a message and someone says to me, Matt, I wish I could afford a reading. Matt, I wish that I could attend, you know, and hear a message from my loved one, but I just can't afford it. You know, I, I, I can't afford the price. So I did something that I feel like no other medium is doing. I wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance at hearing from their loved one. So the online readings are only $19 to attend. You can attend with your family and you can attend right from your house using your iPhone, iPad, Android, tablet, however you get on the internet, you can go and attend. Just make sure you reserve your spot because there's only one catch. I can only allow a limited amount of people. So August, if you're seeing this message right now, I hope this is getting to you in time because literally August 1st, there are only five spots left. 
So if you are seeing this, you need to go to my website right now because once we're sold out, we're sold out. So head on over there, reserve your spot, and I cannot wait to see who comes through in spirit. And I want to also remind you that the people that you love here in this world, you will be reunited with. That's heaven's promise to all of us. Heaven reunites us and never separates us. And if you listen closely, even when you don't feel them, you will hear messages from your loved ones in spirit. They appear using signs, dreams, repeating numbers, any way they can to get messages to you. And what I want you to know is that they're always right there. Even though they might seem distant, they're only just a thought away. So until next time, I'll see you soon. And remember, your loved ones are always with you.